fact, the, the pole is tipped over. And because it's tipped over, I can get a sunburn on my bald spot. And um, what happens, it turns out, is that it nods, the planet nods. And a nod takes 41,000 years. When it's knotted over, you get more sun at the pole and less at the equator. When it's knotted up, of course, you can see my equator better and my pole knot as well. So you're just moving sun from the equator to pole with the knot. And there's also a wobble and there's a change in the shape of the orbit. And this one's 19, 23,000 years and this one's 100,000 years and 400,000 years. And they beat against each other and it gets really cool. But basically, when there's a lot of sun at the pole, the ice melts. And when there's a little sun at the pole, the ice drops. That takes a few tens of thousand years to grow, and it takes 10,000 years to melt. When we try to explain that cycle, we always tiptoe back to CO2, because it turns out that some of those changes in the sunshine, when they're making it warmer in the north, they're making it warmer in the south, and less at the equator. And some of them, when they're making it warmer at the north, they're making it colder in the south. But the south got cold when the north got cold. When we try to explain that, it turns out that a lot of these things affect CO2, the CO2 affects temperature, and the temperature record we see. And so when we try to explain that, we're actually back to CO2 again, um, as the, something that's necessary to explain the whole story of what happened. Those changes are over. You can just about see those changes. In a thousand years, you get a degree or something like that out of that. It's not really fast enough to affect us yet. What I've just brought you through is that warm has been high CO2 and cold has been low CO2. We now are kicking CO2. We are doing it. We're going to take 500 million years worth of accumulation of fossil fuels and put it in the air in 500 years. We're doing it a million times faster than nature. The change that we've done so far in CO2, scientifically unequivocal. Compared to what we can do, it's, we haven't doubled it yet. We could octuple it. Okay, we barely started. The warming that we're seeing so far is scientifically unequivocal, but you in your day-to-day -day life probably have not noticed that the world has been turned on its head because of the warming. What's coming, if we burn it all, you will. Okay, your grandkids' grandkids will notice it. What's going on now, what we see very clearly, the little bit of warming that's happened so far is showing up in melting of sea ice, it's showing up in melting of Greenland, it's showing up in melting of mountain glaciers, it's showing up in the coast of Alaska, it's showing up in thawing of permafrost, it's showing up in reduction of seasonal snow cover. The little bit of warming is having an impact. And then we look out to the future, and we have very, very high scientific confidence that when you crank the thermostat, the temperature goes up. And if you get a big impact from the little change we've made so far, we're, many of us are very concerned of what the big change that we can do is going to, to do. It's very easy for anyone to look out there and say, look, we haven't been trashed by this yet. And that's accurate. Don't kid anybody. The change so far is very small. But it's far enough that we can validate our models. It's far enough that we can see that our understanding works. We can explain. We can predict. And when we take that understanding and we crank it into the future, what we see is that if we don't find alternate fuels, we give our grandkids' grandkids a really different world. And a world, they'll still live. Humans are bees, we're here. But um, it's a word that, world that is harder to live in. If you take our scientific understanding and you couple it to an economic model and say, what should we do? The economic model says to make money, you start investing now. And if you tell the economic model our uncertainties, this is science, it's not revealed truth, okay? You're not sure about that. If you tell the economic model how uncertain we are, the economic model says invest more now. And you'll hear all these people saying, no, 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 wait until you're sure. And the economic model says, no, there's a chance a real hideous disaster out there. If you're really worried about uncertainties, you put more money on the table. 